What's up, Erica? Hi. I'm going to be muted most of the time to have a big crowd around me. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. mm. Mom's around and, uh, and so is uh, Zen. You're muted, but I'm going to assume that's. Sorry? I'm saying your mom's around in Zen. Yes, yes, they're they're right here. And then Jeremy, everybody's here. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, you're full crowd. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Adam, what's up? Uh, Where am I? Is, is that where I came from? Recording. Where? On my computer. I, oh, well, I, I kicked off the recording here. So. We're all recording. If anyone's wondering. Calvin's here. I think we have everybody besides Russell. And Russell's always uh, a couple minutes late. So we kick it off. Annie's not going to join us tonight, right? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, she's not going to. Um, Oh yeah, one, one, speaking of any a small change, Calvin, um, uh, we we incorporated you into the into the uh, like schedule of people taking on projects and stuff. Um, that said, I thought I would swap you with Annie because I don't know how often she'll be able to join uh, going forward, um, yeah. which is something I wanted to chat with the team about at some point, but. Um, would you mind taking minutes? She was supposed to take the minutes today. Oh, not at all. Yeah, I saw that on the uh, on the rules thing in Miro. So I pulled up the uh, last minutes that you'd sent in the email and made a copy, and I'm ready to go. Cool, cool. Hey. Yeah, not, everyone's got their own style, um, so don't you know? I think the the, uh, the focus we try to suggest is just try to grab the main highlights, particularly the action items. The action items are the big, big thing, right? Um, Okay. We used yep. we used to like create an agenda from there uh, oftentimes, but otherwise, you know, don't try to. I wouldn't stress about being super duper like um, absolutely every detail. Otherwise, you might not be able to participate yourself. So, just yeah, that's true. Cool. Brad, do you want to kick things off? I think you're the facilitator. Oh sure. Yeah, I think we're ready. I wasn't. We can wait for um, Russell, but. I think we should just get started. He he said that he he's, he would be kind of delayed, uh, start in meetings. So, uh, because of ki the kids and stuff like that, he said just you know generally get started. He he's, he's always going to try to get time, but okay. sometimes with the kids and you know. Families. Um, we're this is meeting nine, right? This is meeting nine, yeah. So, uh, it says. Oh wait, okay, I see, I see. Okay, Russell has the icebreaker this time. <laughs> so, that's the chink in this uh plan yeah oh gosh and we uh yeah we're kind of we keep breaking the icebreaker rule anyways because i think we you can what, was, what was the situation last week somehow we switched to at the icebreaker cal calvin stepped in last minute to uh, uh -huh. how about Je yes. jennifer did you yeah, have an icebreaker right. from last week that maybe you did yeah, sure. We can use my icebreaker from last week. Perfect. Oh, yes. Yep. Uh, it's just, uh, where have you traveled? And where of those places, where would you like to go back to? Oh. I'm sorry, can you repeat? I, I missed it. Where have you traveled? Mm -hmm. Have you traveled? Huh? And then where would you go back to? Was that was yeah. the second part? Of those places where we do. We got to make sure we keep it short. Cool. <laughs> we do only have two hours too, so keep that in mind. Okay. Just where have uh, where nobody have no long, long stories about uh, travels. Okay, so yeah, let's jump into it. Um, I think that's a great icebreaker. Um, does the facilitator start? No, I don't remember. The answering the icebreaker is that? Yeah, I'll go first. I've I've okay, traveled. Yeah, yeah. What's? Uh, Canada and Mexico, France.
France, Portugal, and Spain. Mm -hmm. That's about it. Why would you go back? Oh, I would go back to any of those places. Cool. It's a good list. Who should go next? Uh, Erica. Hi. Um, hi, everybody. I've traveled to um, Germany, France, Austria, I've traveled to here, because I'm not from here, <laughs> uh, Guatemala, Belize, um, yep, and I would go to Iceland next, <laughs> yes, and next, um, Adam. Um, I've been to a lot of places, uh, I'd probably go back to, um, there's a few spots that I went through that I didn't realize had like some really interesting archaeology, like Bolivia and Peru and Egypt. Um, so I wouldn't mind going back to those three. Um, Vivek, what about you, bud? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I've been to a bunch of places too. Uh, Name twenty. <laughs> that's uh. This, this is why uh, I said uh, we gotta we have to cut it short. Yeah, so I think um, probably the like two favorite places I would like to go back to that I didn't feel like I explored sufficiently would be one would be Tanzania. Uh, I didn't get to do like climb Kilimanjaro, that would have been awesome. And we re the two of us recently went to Alaska, and I loved it there. I'd love to go back, and hopefully, hopefully we will. So yeah, uh, I'll pick Brad. Yeah, this is a really good one. Um, I've been to Hawaii, I've been to, my family we traveled to Cape Cod in Massachusetts a lot, and uh, we've gone to Florida a couple of times, and um, the place I think I would go back to, or at least near, um, for my honeymoon, we went to Nice in France, it was just like super beautiful, um, and we kind of, we did like a ton of stuff in Nice, so I think we've, I've kind of done everything in Nice, but like the Mediterranean, I think, like pretty much anywhere in the Mediterranean, but um, kind of like probably Italy is one where you want to go back to. Oh, sorry. Um, Calvin, did you go? I haven't yet. Nope. Okay. Go All ahead. right. Uh, been uh, in my like memory full years. So like before I was five, I've been to Maine. I've been down to Florida, and uh, you know I grew up in Michigan. So not too many uh, super interesting places. I, I, I loved hiking in the Appalachian Trail, um, uh, Northern Georgia and Tennessee area. Um, so I definitely go back there. That, that's awesome. I, I just love hiking. So that's where I'd go. Okay. Is, that is everybody or is Russell here now? Is Russell yeah, I'm here. How's it going? It. <laughs> what, what are we doing? I came a little too late to understand. Icebreaker, and it's uh, where have you traveled and where would you like to go back to? Um, you know, I've traveled mostly in the States, the, the, the East Coast, and then I have gone on a cruise where we went down in the Caribbean area and uh, we hit up Jamaica, but we were only staying for like day, like partial days, so it wasn't really enough. But yeah, I've, I've gone all along a lot of different places, but I think I'd prefer to stay in the states and i'd prefer to probably go south hmm. yeah just because i like the warmth so <laughs> if that's everybody i'll hand it over to the facilitator oh, Ula. I think, yep. oh Ula. Ula, go ahead As i've traveled uh, to mexico germany uh czech slovakia sweden um but where would and around the United States, uh, Viva already took Alaska back where, where I would definitely go back. So if I would have to pick a different place, um, maybe Sweden, definitely would like to go back. Yep. <clears throat> cool. Thanks, Jennifer, for, for stepping in for Russell <laughs> on the icebreaker. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, we did get everybody, right? Yep, sure. St um, so, 
Next step, I'm going to read through the agenda. Um, and then, uh, and yeah, we, if we have anything to add, we can add it. So we did icebreaker, uh, agenda, three business model canvas. We're going to go over the uh, value proposition again. And after that, mission statement update and uh, vision uh, from Adam. Miro training uh, from Ula and Erica. Then how do, how do we make sure we are making smart decisions from Vivek? Feedback form review. And then how did the meeting go and anything else? So does anyone, anyone have anything else we should add? Me. Oh, sorry, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna uh, I like, like reach out to Emily who attended a couple of our first meetings, but she cannot continue. Well, she wants to support us and she's uh, connected. Well, you can just say, you, you, you can just yeah, so I would like to add something, uh, like update my, uh, yeah, whatever update from Emily and uh, kind of talk about her offer. Uh, yeah, participate okay. Something, so. Do you think we should do that? Do you want to do that at the beginning or is that something that would no, be appropriate at the yeah. end? It's fine, yeah. Okay, let me add it so I don't forget. So you, I said offer from Emily? Yeah, like a, meet, like a meeting, uh, an event offer. Event offer. Yeah. Oh, event offer. Okay, let me put event offer. How do you spell Emily? Is it is it an American spelling? Is it a uh, is it Amelie? Emilia. Ends with E. I E. Is it I E? Okay. I E. Okay. That's an American. No. American would be with Y. Ah, okay. I would yeah that yeah sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I would consider that the American spelling. Um, okay, so um, business model canvas. I'm gonna do since I'm the facilitator too. I got my little, uh, I got my cat timer to keep us on time. So <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> we're gonna see how this works. And hopefully it, it's not too noisy. I don't know if, can you hear it clicking? Yep. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep it, try to make it so that's not too. It's not clicking now. Okay. We could hear you winding it. Okay, cool. I was hoping it's clicking to add some intensity. <laughs> That'd be really good. Mm. We have to do it right now. Let me bring up my uh, business model. Okay. Oh, wait, I have it linked in here, don't I? Um, so we went over it uh, value proposition a little bit last week. If people remember, we got some ideas um, and I definitely want to get back to that. And hopefully people have more ideas um, for what we can add to that list. Um, oh no, wait, where, where am I going? I want to be, sorry. Um, should have got this on my screen before. Um, but before we do that, I want to do like a little brainstorming exercise. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna get this way here. Um, let me share my screen too. I wanted to do a little brainstorm. I wonder if I can just do this. Let's just share Chrome. Brainstorming exercise to get us in the get us in the mood for thinking of uh, these key propositions that we're gonna provide. Um, so I want to take, I don't know, like five, maybe 10 minutes, depending on how it goes, to talk about our experiences trying to get to um, zero, zero reusable plastics, I think is kind of the big one that I think, you know, but definitely um, uh, yeah, if there's other value propositions you want to talk about, I think you can definitely incorporate. Um, but I want to talk, have everyone kind of talk about their experiences that they've gone through because um, I think we've kind of all been on this journey of trying to get to uh, zero, either zero plastics or more sustainable. Um, so I guess I'll start. Um, and this is kind of, uh, you know, I, I guess I haven't really thought about going to zero plastics, but I think, um, you know, my family's kind of been trying to do definitely more recycling and have less just like black bag, I guess like I would call black bag trash, where it's just like trash that's just going into the landfill um, in general. And something that we actually haven't been doing recently, but we did all last year and worked out pretty well. Um, I think it's kind of counterintuitive too, is shop at Costco. 
Um, and you may think like Costco is just kind of like has nothing to do with sustainability, but a lot of the things they do are really actually pretty sustainable. They don't do any single use gar uh, grocery bags. If you know those plastic bags that are um, you know, constantly being littered everywhere. And um, a lot of the containers are actually like, are actually reusable. So like a good example, if you see my video, this is like a, like a pickle jar that's like plastic that I'm reusing to grow some seeds in. Um, so it's like things like that, where it's like, we're, we're constantly using those uh, things. And they use a lot of cardboard um, packaging and stuff for fruits and stuff like that. Um, so switching to switching to Costco is kind of big, uh, was like a big, big thing for my family. I can go next. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so my wife is the market maven and she is the person who purchases at my, in my family for the most part. Yeah. She finds the deals um, and everything. She's conscious of my desires to have less plastic, although it's not really, it's not really like uh, as important for her. However, she knows that it bothers me. Um, I try to re I do I try to do similar things with like that plastic that you showed where you're starting seeds. So I save a lot of plastic <laughs> um, from going to landfill. But mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of single use plastic, and I've just kind of decided like that stuff's just gonna get burnt. Like um, I know that my uh, in my region we burn our trash that um, instead of landfill, yeah. and they try to recapture energy from it. I have no idea. I've never did a tour of the facility. I have no idea if that's true or how or how um, good it is or how much pollution it produ produces. But um, yeah, I kind of do that. Um, as far as like paper products, those don't leave my house. So like paper gets composted. So that includes cardboard boxes and everything. Um, I use that for gardening. Um, there's a technique called sheet mulching where you can actually put cardboard down and then smother grasses out on turf. <laughs> and um, you can grow garden beds really easily that way without mm -hmm. having to till. So it saves a lot of back. Uh, breaking the labor um so yeah we don't throw away tr and so we kind of have I, i've kind of set up separate bins at my house where i have um compost which is any kitchen scraps if it was alive it goes in there and they can throw paper in there too although if it's really bulky i, I ask them like hey don't throw all that paper in there that's just going to be a mess for me to figure out um and then you know plastic if it's recyclable goes in the recycling bin and then there's trash and i try to keep the trash to the minimal because I know that I can't do anything about it. Another, th another weird thing I do is I'll only bring my trash out if it's completely full because that prevents the, the, uh, the trash truck from stopping at my house, which the starting and stopping of a garbage truck is actually like what uses all the fuel. <laughs> so if yeah. it doesn't have to stop, it, it doesn't use as much energy. So I usually put my trash out once a month, which is not that much, but it's pretty good. So that's really it. Like um, I could talk for hours, but I'll let somebody else. Sure. Um, yeah. I'll kick it over to Erica. Um, okay. So I, the biggest change I've made, I would say in the last year, is definitely trying to reduce, reduce plastic. Like I used to think that you could um, recycle everything. So I felt comfortable using like, for instance, this is a good example, buying like already disinfected lettuce in those little plastic containers. And then I would just like say, oh, it gets recycled. So then I learned that just a small percentage actually gets recycled. So I not, now I do more things from scratch. Like I wash my own uh, greens uh, and I bring like uh, reusable produce bags, cam like, the, like canvas bags. And I like if I'm going somewhere instead of like just picking the wok that's on the store in the little plastic container, I will make it myself. Um, yeah, trying to avoid as much as I can. And I've been lately doing like some try testing some like a waste free products, especially, especially cleaning supplies. Um, that's we have made some, some big changes. There are some things that are still hard to find or like very expensive when you buy in like in bulk, like cheese, it's still like just, it, and, and that's just garbage, like a cheese wrapping or like 
uh, get all the like um, cold cuts that my family all eat need and um, those packaging like uh, it's, um, so it's that's been really hard to cut and yeah like remembering to bring my bags everywhere something that I learned from from Vivek uh, is bringing my container when I go to a restaurant so like so if I have like if I want to uh, take something home I just fill up my own container to take um try to order like if you want to eat sushi we go we try to go to the place because it comes with so much plastic when you order and just making like these small changes but it's been quite a journey and and it, it like it, it it has required my family to make some major changes uh so yeah that's why I'm so confused about this because I, I wish I can make it like way easier for everybody else. Hmm. And next, uh, Calvin. Um, I have like one uh, story of like an instance where we reduced our plastic use. Um, Brad, I wanted to make sure, is that the, like uh, what's the prompt for what we're talking about? Yeah, it's not, um, I mean, we don't even, necessarily everyone doesn't have to have like um uh, a whole a whole lot i guess it's you know i guess it, we, i just want to get into hearing our own or thinking about our own stories of uh going on this journey so um it could be something that like um even like you 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 really wanted to do this thing but it's been like a, i like the cold cuts are really hard uh that uh, kind of uh part of it that erica said like, so stuff that like you've noticed, like we use a lot of these and I just can't find, uh, you know, uh, something that's uh, like, uh, I can't find, you know, cat food that doesn't use, that doesn't use plastic or something. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so anything relevant to that, that I can think of, I, um, I found it extremely difficult to like what words to look up um, because using Google, you need to have mm -hmm. something called Google food. So what are the terms used to describe these products that that are made and packaged and delivered in a way that is, you know, uh, measurably sustainable, like that, that achieve a certain threshold of like acceptability. Um, and I wanted to mention that we we had a hard time finding um, shampoo companies that would let us um, mail back and forth their containers and just refill them. But and we eventually found um, a shampoo company that sends out sticks of like conditioner and shampoo. And we found um, deodorant companies that will resend back and forth the container. Uh, and I, maybe that's counterproductive because in just mailing it and sending it back and forth, the petroleum use there is bad. I don't know. Uh, but the, the last relevant thing is there, there was a, a really cool grocery store that you could go in and have a beer at in, in Lansing, Michigan, out on the west side. It was called Horrocks. And at Horrocks, they had a, a station full of these huge columns full of different types of beans, like pistachios and peanuts and walnuts. And you could bring your own container and you could fill it. And then they just weighed how much the container was while it was empty. And then they weigh it when it's full. And then you got to take your thing home, have a beer, walk around, eat their like aged cheese on display. And I loved it. I loved the experience. Um, so hope that helps. No, uh, That's some good stuff there. Yeah. yeah. Um, who wants to go next? Ra raise a hand for me. Uh, right? yeah, okay, yeah, I can go next. Do it, yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, so the, the story is long already, but I remember how I started. Like my friends were calling me a uh, recycling sergeant because everywhere I would go, I would kind of- Sergeant, like, not surgeon, sergeant. Yeah. Sar uh, <laughs> so search through their garbage and I would tell them, hey, why are you throwing this to the garbage? And they were all really resistant. So I was persistent and I would go through the garbage literally and pick the glass bottles, cans, plastic, and um, put it to the recycling. Um, then eventually uh, we like, for example, when we met with Vivek and we, we, when we went to the restaurants, I get like uh always extremely hungry over this i i really am and i like over order so he started telling me like mm, you know what like uh why like um you have a limit 
for your order, you cannot bring any leftovers home, uh, which was really difficult for, for me because I wanted this and this and this. So we made this uh, kind of, um, I don't know how to call it. A deal. A deal that if I over order and I would uh, get the container, I had to donate like 10 or $20 to some organization. And that, uh, you know, in the beginning, I, I had to do it a few times. And then after a few times, it kind of uh, made me even more cautious, you know, that before I was like mm, picking at my friends, but actually I'm doing the same when I go to the restaurant. So I uh, somehow it, it happened that I, I Stop doing that. Uh, I ordered uh, like exact the food that I needed and I didn't bring any containers home. And eventually we started bringing our containers to the restaurant <laughs> just in case. But other than that, like we also do a compost, uh, which is not that easy where we live. So sometimes, uh, most of the time, we actually, I bike like 20 minutes to drop off the compost once a week. Um, our whole freezer is full of compost, nothing else from the whole week. And then, uh, yeah, we, we just uh, go to the spot. Um, I mean, no. I can talk at the talk. So maybe since we are live in the same house, we can take over, but. Yeah, there's some, yeah. Good, there's some good like behavioral changes in there that kind of ties into, I think like the educational part of it. I'm just like learning learning different ways to uh, learning know, different ways right? to reduce not, waste yeah not just you know recycling or not just uh, uh, consuming less but yeah. yeah just learning from the small behaviors because we think oh. we actually are kind of eco-friendly but then you see the hardcore people and you know it makes you realize that oh there's so much more I can do um, yes uh, who wants to go next? Let's do like, uh, if we do like a couple more short ones, just so we can keep moving a little bit. Cause I do want to, you know, do a little more brainstorming. I can do, I can do a short yeah. one, yeah. Um, actually. So like my, mine would be really summed up in that. I think this one like sentence that Adam actually shared with the group a while ago when we were looking at mission statements, which is like, like if you, even if you want to be even if you want to be environmentally like friendly or like eco-friendly, it's really hard. And, and I, and I like that to change. And, and the, basically in summary that there's this, it, if you want to buy a, a bottle, a bottle of water, you want to buy food. Uh, almost always it's like comes in plastic packaging and, and it's very fr frustrating. It would be nice if, if that wasn't the case and you could do the things you wanted to do and there was an alternative uh, packaging material. So that would be my, I don't know if that's clear or makes sense to you, Brad, but. Yeah, I think that makes well, sense. I could go real quick. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, at my house, I'm the um, recycling officer, but I'm hoping one day to become the, the sergeant. <laughs> um, <laughs> As you sit in front of a flag. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right. Um, can, I, can I share my screen real quick? Oh, sure. Do I need to? Do you want to? Um, can I yeah, you just switch it. Oh, okay. Yeah, you did that? It. Did that do it? Yeah, you got it. Anyway, uh, yeah, Vitamix makes this new product that uh, it's a composter. It's pretty neat, um, and we're we're considering buying it. Um, and um, small and efficient. Um, the neat part about it is like you could add um, all sorts of stuff that normally you couldn't compost, like chicken bones and yeah. um, um, stuff like that. So. Uh, yeah, I'm, we're considering it. If we do, I'll get back to you. But um, um, yeah, the thought is to be able to use this thing to uh, to do the composting. That's it. Yeah, but that's that's a good one. You guys might. Find I had it. seen I had seen something similar, but it was bigger. And I mean, I don't know how much this cost, but the the one I saw was like it's like t at least a thousand dollars, but might even be like two thousand dollars or something. So it was like you know you really wanted to have to. <laughs> yeah have come to uh, compost your stuff i think the price point's uh 300 for this one okay that's definitely better no uh, consider yeah. i mean like you know in in hypothetically composting is free so it's like for me like spending a, a lot of money just to get compost didn't really make a lot of sense right right but like 300 is like probably a good spot 
yeah for a long time i i would just throw all my like peels and stuff um mm -hmm. outside because we have you know decent amount of land and mm -hmm. uh um but i realized like it just the all the uh wildlife was just eating it which mm -hmm. isn't that great so um yeah i was like oh man it's just disappearing into the ground this is great yeah. i'm so so green but now yeah the thing i do now is just kind of bury it like i just dig a hole like we have a a bucket that we put it in and then i just like dig a hole in the backyard and i don't know if it's actually like doing anything mm. <laughs> like it yeah, could be it's, just sitting there i mean i can talk about talk to that yeah it's doing great like um that's called trench composting so yeah. it's been people have been doing it forever longer I, than longer than the internet that's <laughs> worth the, the best pro composting guys we should you should ask him a few questions the what Oh yeah, that's also the pro at composting. Yeah, he has a whole YouTube channel. Covering. Compost everything. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. It's a good channel. Um, so yeah, like a lot of good stuff there. I took a bunch of notes. Jennifer, but... maybe also just. Oh, Jennifer, did you did you want to? Uh... I'll just add that I compost uh, under the sink with red worms, and it works really well. It doesn't stink. It, uh, doesn't that's take the thing in our house. My my. My wife hates that I compost stuff because <laughs> it's the smell that gets us. But you said it was red worms? Red wigglers, yeah. Red worms are uh, really good at eating things. Yeah, cool. So do you buy them from, how does it work? Do you buy those worms or you bring them from outside? Um, Either. I got mine at a place called Lower East Side uh, Ecology Center. Um, oh. They they go to the Union Square Farmers Market, so um, you can, or yeah, you can get the worms there. Oh, cool, Jennifer. Beyond the, the composting part, any other like tidbits from your journey? Like, you know, you're you're very um, engaged in these communities, and, and you know, I know you've been very active in general. I'm sure you have beyond composting. I'm sure you have something else that maybe. Uh well. Actually, where I'm living right now, the building doesn't even, the recycling doesn't even get recycled at all. So, um, and I'm, I'm not composting here because my roommates don't want to do it. But uh, when I was living uptown, I was really impressed with how little garbage I could make. Especially mm -hmm. composting. Yeah, cool. So yeah, um, I think there's like a lot of good stuff here. We covered on a lot of points. Now that we're kind of in that mindset, I think this is a very specific way to think about key propositions. But um, the way I like to do it is to start with that, start with like, think about your journey and then think about um, what are like, I guess kind of like at the, the high level, like what are the things to, um, what are the things to get you that got you there? And like, how can we, and like the things we could provide like, to get other people there, if that makes sense. Right, so like, I think we talked a lot about uh, kind of educational stuff, like learning, like getting used to bring containers to, re to a restaurant with us or learning terminology. Um, I think uh, what are some other good like educational ones that I, um, you know, learning to finding companies that do, um, that you can ship ship the containers back to, you know, like, you know, or ship, you know, is shipping like, is um, having people ship us containers back, is that something, I think that's like a good example, is that something we feel like we, we could do? Um, for, as far as part of the key value proposition? Yeah, 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 as like I, a, like, we, you know, we'll accept, you know, containers and fill them again. I think yeah. I think we would want to be more generic, but I'm not sure if that helps. Generic to like what? Well, we we were saying that it may be more expensive to, or maybe worse for the environment to ship the uh, empty containers. Oh, okay. So yeah. perhaps there would be a way to maybe we we have a, a part of our company is to. Um, have a way to help people recycle mm -hmm. or compost. And that could be teaching them, that could be telling them where they can drop off, like uh, Eula's doing, stuff like that. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do like an education section here and do where to drop. 
I'm not completely against uh, having people uh, sending us the containers back. Mm -hmm. uh, we can have like um, kind of like a day, a, a week, or even a month for things that like shampoo and things that last, and and maybe have like a minimum of like you have to ship three containers back, or like or like a plan that would be like kind of like a like a subscription that. Um, we'll all, also include um, be, like sending the containers back because yeah, I, I, we will have to like actually do some research to, to see like like what's worse, right? Like just this shipping, like try to find like a, the most, um, how's it called when the shipping is not uh, like, I don't wanna say green shipping, it has a name. Uh, and, carbon or like sorry like carbon, like a carbon neutral shipping yeah car carbon neutral and i think recycling is like much like more uh, uh has a bigger impact because they have to ship it i don't know where to get recycled in the first place um so yeah I, I, that's something that i would definitely be interested in in in, in doing research what has the biggest impact okay so I'll write it down and we'll research, you know, what it would take. I think that's definitely like can be like something we're gonna why, be doing for each of these. Why don't we call it like a um a reuse program instead of a recycling program, a reuse program. So we can figure out how to reuse yeah. these things, not recreate them, but like use the same exact bottle, right? I think yeah, like figure both out how to foods kind of came up a couple of times. So do you think yep. something like that where like you know, I guess in in this case we would fill like a container with some sort of bulk food that we would get and then they would return it and we'd fill it again. You, you, like, yeah, bulk, bulk bins I think are interesting. The container component though, I, I would I would like to like imagine us thinking beyond, especially especially if it's plastic. Uh, obviously if it's um, or more specific, if it's like a plastic container. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you're gonna have to use some kind of container for uh, lots of things, whether, you know, but. But plastic container, I would like us to think beyond that, um, because once plastic is created, then it it really doesn't go anywhere. It's not going to go anywhere for like at least four hundred years, mm -hmm. not longer. So, um, like to me, you know, I would like to for us to imagine beyond a plastic container of any sort and trying to like urge. Um, and try to be a catalyst for people or for products to be made in other type of containers. What do you think like the cutoff is um, for any material as far as either like how many times you could reuse it or when it would, would need to break down? I think, I think if we, like if, if we tried to do a reuse program, I think if we kept it to one in one in plastics number one and plastics number two, that would probably be the okay. w what we would do, and then if we were going to manufacture or purchase in, we'd probably want them to be plastic number one or plastic number two, because those can be reused almost indefinitely until they start to actually break down into microplastics. Then they should be burned. But what about aluminium containers? They um, that some companies are switching to aluminium containers now. And um, I, I, I think it's a very good alternative. Or no and, container at all. Like I just got a, I mean, I just got a shampoo bar with no container. Yes. Amazing. But that, that again, like if we, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the ideal, but like no, not everybody's gonna switch into a shampoo bar. Sure. Right? Or like, or like a body lotion. Uh, so I've been getting, I've been trying to look for these aluminum uh, uh, containers like products and, and I, I found some I found, um they seem pretty like good like I don't see why wouldn't we choose yeah no, aluminum's amazing like, recycled yeah. aluminum is yeah. amazing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I have a feeling I think we should cut like we should draw a I, I would like to urge that we consider like drawing a line where even even plastic at all because even one and twos which is which is yeah I, I know your point Russell m I, like the concern is uh, people are like oftentimes not wise to recycle it. Like I think the recycling rate uh, across the country is around like 25%. And then mm -hmm. secondly, just like considering microplastic 
fossil fuel industry, all yeah. these things. Like trying, yeah, I think trying to be a catalyst to, to find and alternative materials and making making it like people feel or like know that they when they enter our store that they are buying from a store that's um like very is thought like thought through all these problems like to yeah, something yeah. kind of like like and, and when you buy an apple device or a degree like that's kind of what their marketing is it's like we've thought about everything for you you don't have to do any thinking at all like we've we've kind of really made this like seamless for you um, yeah, there's also the difference between what uh, online products are and, and, and in the store. In the store, I would say definitely no containers, and we could have the choice, like, if they forgot the containers, or if it's the first time, they can either buy the container or take one and, with, and leave a deposit. Um, yeah. um, but when it's, like, online, uh, maybe our, we're going to have fewer products that can, the only the ones that we can in my opinion, commit to to ship without any plastic packaging specifically. But in the store, I would say we can commit to no con selling, no containers or very, very, very eco-friendly ones. Yeah, I actually think this is actually a great solution. If we had the same product um, in the store, let's say shampoo that's uh, you can drink a bottle to refill and we would encourage people to drink no plastic container but the same shampoo can be shipped and I mean bought online and shipped that is in in aluminium or something that is definitely uh, recyclable so the same product just is different packaging yeah yeah so in that situation in the store it's kind of like a bulk store where it's just like a dispenser right yeah yeah. But we but they're just bringing in and then like we have like a standard sized aluminum container that they like can fill up. Oh, it can be like like what Calvin was mentioned. You bring any container you want basically and then mm -hmm. you weight it. Yeah. And then you weigh it again. Yeah. It's basically a bulk, like It's called like car weight or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. so what was it? I should write it down. What is Tear, it? yeah, T A R. E maybe T A R E. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be kind of cool if we, you know we built the brand around it where people started to seek out our packaging and to keep it you know mm -hmm. i got one of these i got an altoid box i remember kids used to collect altoid containers the aluminum containers just because they were cool right it'd be really nice if if people like had that to our brand and like don't throw that away you can reuse that sort of thing <laughs> Yeah, or just just like generally useful for other, you know. Or it's things. you know that's worth money. You don't throw that out because <laughs> yeah. people could bring us so containers. Like yeah, that'd be yeah, that'd be awesome. Like yeah, we, like we could have our community bring in containers and we use we use their containers to like for if someone wants to fill like I don't know rice grains in a you know what was a peanut butter jar before like. Mm -hmm. perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And often, I, I mean, I've seen uh, some companies that uh, would like if you buy a product from them, they already attached like a kind of uh, like label. How can you reuse the product? For example, candles. I bought like those candles in, in metal containers, and then they told you, oh, you can use it for to plant a, a tiny plant. You know, so we could also encourage this, depending what kind of packaging we had, we can always suggest, oh, what else can you do with it if you don't use it for, for the same reason? There's We're also encouraged. like stickers, stickers that say, they mention the tart weight, in case you bring the container again, it already says, um, what's the weight of the container? And also I've thought that it, like it, it's, we should have like a nice like line of containers that we provide for people like for the first time experience if people don't want to bring their containers just sell the containers yeah with the idea of selling them once and that can be part of the business too well that's what i was thinking um when we were talking about bringing a container to a restaurant you know that we just you know we have a container we sell containers that are purpose for you know like taking out for like bringing, I guess, I don't know what to call it, but taking home your own carry out, like take your own out, yeah. take out. No, you're right. Yeah. That's not exactly the same. So selling, it's like selling containers, but there's nothing in it. You know what I mean? It's just like, 
like buying it from a container store. Brad, I, I have um, a, a thought on like on this, but I, I think it might be something that's in another direction. And it's something that I think uh, uh, yeah. Vivek was was touching on is is the topic of like how much of our company, especially on its founding, is going to be an invention process towards mm -hmm whole new ways of holding containers. So I, I came from a, 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 the slightest of grazings with an engineering background. And uh, I imagine them thinking of like foldable aluminum containers that could be folded flat and mailed, but all they need is a, um, a, a wax paper lining. And then they become uh, something that can hold something as um, elusive as olive oil and be shipped back. You know, so it's the cheapest when it's when it's shipped out uh, flat, and then it's uh, it can hold whatever you wanted it to, and it's not made of plastic anywhere in the process. Um, I, and I'm wondering, like, you know, and other great ideas that are in that direction, like um, hard pressed cardboards or something. Uh, uh, is this a good place to talk about it, or should we, um, or or does anyone ever want to talk about invention later? Um, yeah, I think, well, I think if you have a specific one that you think we, we, we can research, I think this is a good spot for it. Um, I think new, I think saying new, we're going to bring new products that, you know, are new to the market is a little too vague. If that, if that makes, does that kind of answer your question? Or like, like creative a, way, creative packaging, you call it, or mm, innovative okay. packaging or... So this conversation is more about how can we best utilize existing technologies versus creating new packaging technologies. It's it's actually both. It's okay. a little bit of both. But okay. I just want to be more specific. Yeah, I guess we just need to be a little more specific then. We um, use a lot of creative, innovative packaging. I think is is you know heading in the right direction. We um, use we Pyrex. Wanna, at, yeah. We use Pyrex at our house, which is glass. And I think the tops are rubber, but I'm not sure if they're rubber or plastic, but that those are heavy though. So that would be hard to ship. Yeah. But they're great for food. Go ahead, Vivek. I think you wanted to talk. I think Ula wanted to say something. I was, I mean, I was thinking about it. Maybe once we are already kind of known, I feel like maybe there will be companies who would actually come to us and offer us, hey, we can offer you this and uh, this innovative packaging, uh, you know, that you can ship. It's not like, because to have this kind of department, I think that would be, that, that's very ambitious mm -hmm. and eventually would be great. But I, I think once we would have, uh, once we would be out there, companies would reach out to us. Right down. Yeah, I think, I think that, I think the, when it, sorry, you can write Brad or would you say? Yeah, I was trying partnerships, to that. maybe right? Packaging, well, partnerships, packaging, like once we consulting, kind of hmm? packaging uh, partnerships. Okay, potential partnerships. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thinking, thinking, like very specifically within the context of um, of this, I think this is like the value proposition section. Like, um, like I often think about when, like when I think about co-ops in general, I often think about like, organic valley and like how they how they were successful um, in a very tough industry back in the '80s, and and they're still actually continuing to be successful. And I think they're like the really unique thing that they brought back then, and and they they continue to be like a brand that represents that is is organic. And they actually didn't even start off with that as their branding name; it was like a different name. And um, but in the '80s, for sure, for sure, they they stood apart, and they've continued to like lead the way of um, you know being a like a thought leader in organic and grass fed. And so for us, like, you know, that's why like, I, would, I would, I think, you know, thinking about um, being, taking a really like, strong stance of, you know, being very sustainable packaging and, and maybe having some like clear definition of what that means um, as we, you know, determine like what that means for us. And um, we'll, and hopefully that will resonate with, um, with uh, like uh, our, our customers. And I think, in my mind is, you know, easily composable, easily um, biodegradable. biodegradable. Yeah. Um, so are you thinking, when, the, what comes to mind for me is 
something that like on the packaging, it says, this is how many times you can reuse it. And this is how you can dispose of it. Yeah. And, the, like a line at line. Yeah. yeah. Like what does this end life look like? Right. End life is going to be, you can oh, just like, you know, just, just toss it, you know, in the, in the backyard or, or it can be easily recycled. Yeah. And yeah, I think that would help us really stand apart from yeah. a lot of bigger name competition. Yeah. You know what I was thinking about? Um, creative, innovative packaging um, made me think of, I was in, I want to say Traverse City, Michigan, and it was a little coffee shop and I've never seen, I haven't actually seen it since then, I don't think, but they had water in like a milk and like a, like a paper and like wax milk and tar car uh, carton. Have you seen those? Yeah. I'm trying to think of the company that did it because I haven't really seen it since then. But it was so like I had to get one because it was like I've never seen this before, and it probably still tastes like water. It's like just it was just water. It was like there was nothing fancy about it. It was like spring water from I think know, that might be the company name, just water or only water. I just, just seen that. <laughs> it could be. Is it's it? like water in a box or something like that. Yeah, I think. But I think you know packaging things like water in containers that are not usually used for water. It is kind of like a it's like a, a feature in itself, if that makes sense. Do, do people agree or I didn't, I didn't wanna just like write down my own ideas, but. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I think more people should get filters for their tap. <laughs> yeah, I guess I didn't mean water. I guess like oh. you could take, um, like takes, you know, could we take soda and find some place that will put soda in a, uh, like a paper and wax container or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, even glass. Well, soda, soda's actually, it, it, aluminum's actually really good. It's like yes, of all the true. materials, I think. Soda. Use Maybe soda's not a good example. Like Maybe we could put shampoo. Could you put shampoo? Shampoo, in, uh, yeah. In shampoo, yeah, 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 yeah. Or like aluminum, yeah. Th th ideally that'd be, and that's what I've seen for these stores that are, are doing this. And I'm sure Erica can speak to it. She, I know she does, a, like she knows this market pretty well. She does like product analysis uh, for competitors. <laughs> okay, what did yeah. I say? <laughs> Not About like you do, I, I was just saying that I know you check out our comp competition and how they, they find like interesting packaging for a lot of these things. Yeah, yeah I mean- like, we're, I'm using, I'm using a toothpaste right now. That's in, it's in, um, it's in like an aluminum, recycled aluminum, um, like toothpaste uh, mm -hmm. container. Which was really difficult to find. Yeah. For, for not like a killer price. First of all, even find it. It wasn't that easy. Um, I think yeah, that's I the said, problem yeah. is we, we need to help people find it. Yeah. yeah. Be the place. yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the key value. <laughs> Yeah. exactly i like that phrase and the, the price also like I, I bought this precisely like uh, shampoo and body lotion in an aluminum aluminum uh, bottle that you can ship back but it's 30 dollars to me that's a lot yeah. uh so it, it really like i really think twice before buying and i was like okay so yeah and, and i don't know why it's that elevated if it's aluminum it's nothing fancy <laughs> It was actually cool. interesting when I was looking for the toothpaste, like super quick. I went to eight stores and I asked, do you have a toothpaste in a metal, uh, like aluminum tube? Mm, and mo everybody said, mm, I don't know, I don't think so, but is it important? One person actually asked me, is it really important? People don't even know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Eventually I didn't find it. We found it online, but not in physical store. Mm -hmm. So that was 40 minutes. I don't know if everyone heard the heard my alarm go off. Um, is there anything else? Was there, did anyone else have any lingering ideas we want to get down before we, we move on or? Um, I just wanted to mention that I feel like at some point we should talk about our baseline of what's acceptable and what's not. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we've kind of went very far um, down um, containers. Not and I don't think that's necessarily going to be our focus. So I don't, you know, we can do a lot more brainstorming on um, other things too. Um, maybe we'll follow up, follow up next week. 
Um, but you know, I, I kind of want to go through this exercise and we can kind of go back to a little more high level too, but I wanted to go through this exercise because it's, um, it kind of helps ground, you know, when you ground you in like actual, like what actual things are we going to do? Um, or like what actually, like, what are our products going to look like? I think what Adam was saying was like, what are we not going to do? Would be a, oh, okay. good, a good answer. Yeah, I see what you mean. That's yeah. a, to try to, to brainstorm at some point. Okay. Yeah. Um, I made the mention of like plastics one and two and Viv is like, I don't know. And so we, we eventually will need to figure out what that means for us. Okay. Do you feel, how does everyone else feel about that? Does, is that? Yeah, I'd, I'd personally love to know all of these instances of like attempts at sustainability and which ones do we feel make the cut for, for us and, and our vision and which ones don't. And I'd, I'd specifically love it to be tied to which examples because um, that, and, and then that implies that we'd need to know kind of like what are the data points behind some of these examples that, that appear to be environmental but might not be. Ooh. Yeah. I also think that um, on every item that you do sell in your store online, you'll have a, a co-op store stamp on it and it'll be like, we grade this product a three out of 10 for sustainability, 10 being the best or one, you know, whatever, zero being the worst. Um, and then have some sort of um, uh, metrics to that. Yeah, that would require rubrics and uh, grading and mm -hmm. massaging data. But yeah. Cool. Do we want to do? Um, I feel like we're we could do we could definitely do another week um, on these. Do we want to do? Do we plan on next week going into um, what we're not like starting to set standards and talking about what we're not going to do and where we're kind of start talking about that? We're talking about where we draw the line on things. Yeah. We want to focus in on that. Does that everyone's? How do people feel about that? Yes or no? Of uh, just focusing on um, setting standards for our press as part of the key value prop or the value prop or the right. yep. keeper prop. Yep. Um, maybe as as part of it, I think it'd be nice if we can get to another one of these boxes too, because as we each week we'll be wanting to go back to other boxes. So I feel like if we keep going through the boxes, that'll be best for us. Okay. Okay, let's do, let's do a vote um, in the chat. Um, so uh, let's say, do, uh, do we wanna move on to the next box for next week? So yes is moving on to another box. No is staying in key propositions uh, for next week. I, I, I kind of, sorry, I, I would be sort of in between on that. I, I hear Russell's okay. point, like, I, I think it'd be nice to, to start tackling a little bit of a, another box, but I, I certainly don't think we finished here key props. So yeah. Yeah. I kind of I agree. I, I kind of on both. Like, I, I definitely think, yeah, there's value in trying to tackle a little bit of the next ones who we feel like we're making some move, like movement on the board, but I okay. think there's a lot to still unpack here. On, on the and do you prop. think we'll come back to it? Is that kind of... I. I would suggest um, um, a couple of people do research on what we were just discussing and um, potential baselines um, between now and next week and maybe spend half the time on this former box and then half the time on, you know, introducing the next one. Okay. Do, um, yeah, do we want to do, just people want to volunteer for for that i think that's a i don't know if we would have to vote on i think we can just take some volunteers and have them follow up next week we do researching what exactly so um I mean, adam i'm going to summarize uh researching standards and um standards for the products we would do um what we would not want what exactly we would not want to sell and what we would want to sell and um, I guess researching what are the actual, uh, Calvin, you were saying what your, your point was, what are the actual benefits to some of these? Like are, is aluminum more sustainable? And doing a little research around that. Calvin, was that, do you summarize your point there too? Uh, yeah, 
Okay. Yeah, I'd say so. Does anyone want to volunteer for research? That was kind of a lot. I mean, you, I guess you can, you know. Yeah, I can definitely do a portion of that research. Like I could maybe find all existing technologies and give like the skinny on each one. Okay, I think that's good. So, someone to, else should probably help. Calvin, that's a lot. Anyway. I can try to help you out, Kevin. Maybe we can try to pair. Yeah, I'd love that. That'd be fun. All right. Um, I once did like I just put a bunch of like um, companies, like like competitors. Uh, I made a presentation that I never shared with you guys, and it had like information of what they sell, what they don't. I might, I I share with you. It might serve as a good like uh, baseline for research. Like you can research these companies. Um, yeah, they, they, it says examples. It actually talks about the annual revenue and things like that, but. Uh, they it, it mentions what they sell and what are they sus their sustainability standards. So I'll I'll share the link and put it here, Mira. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys because recently I've been reading about this company Danimer Scientific, and they, uh, if you will be inter interested, I can present what I already read. And they uh, came up with a hundred percent compostable uh, oh. plastic. So if you want, I can uh, next time uh, talk about it. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm thinking, Russell and I can do is we can focus on just making a list of all of the like major sustainability and packaging areas. You know, whether it's compressed cardboard. 100% uh, compostable um, plastics, right? They're not actually plastics. They're like a wax co composite, uh, you know, and other things like aluminum, aluminum return and reuse programs. Um, we could look, we can make a list of all those major areas. And then um, we'll ask all of you in the Slack, hey, here's the list so far. Who can speak to these already so that we're not duplicating extra research? And then Russell and I will fill in the gaps. So we'll coordinate on Slack. I think those compostable plastics are called plastics. They're just made out of uh, like corn oil and things like that. Yeah, yeah, it's made of oil. Yes. Yeah, I um I put up my uh, my fingers in quotes um because I didn't know how else to refer to them. Sorry. So so one cool thing like when we were talking about like do we want to go go into the invention stuff is like. I've already kind of been doing my own lab work at home to yeah, like actually test bad. out if stuff composts. And let me tell you, not a lot of it does, <laughs> even though they say it does. Yeah. Um, it just, it doesn't, yeah, so. There's, there's a, somebody said there's something like called an industrial composter that they yeah. break down in an industrial composter, but not in a regular compost. Yeah, that makes sense. And I'm all, I would also kind of question like who's testing if it really does compost in an industrial composter. Do you well, know what I mean? Like almost nothing. There's no, like they basically don't exist either in this country. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, there's a lot of like like an area of greenwashing. I think yeah. Seattle. Somebody said Seattle does the industrial composting, and so that it works if you put it in your compost in Seattle, but not most places. Since we need, since we would need everyone to respond to this list by a certain date, so this would be a task for everyone would be to check our list that's created by a certain day and then have checked it and responded to which ones you can speak to and attest to by a certain day. And then okay. we, Russell and I know what to look up before okay. the next meeting. <laughs> And actually we've had that pattern before and we decided, yeah. I mean, we usually have meetings on Wednesdays, so we tried to get it done on Friday. Friday yeah. night, like me and Perfect. you would try to get done. Um, but I do know that we we might want to talk about the meeting. Do we want to talk about the meeting today, Vivek? Meeting times and stuff? Yeah, we, we'll see. We'll, we'll try to get to it. Um, okay. I can yeah. I can add that to the agenda so Thanks. we don't forget it. Um, OK, I think that's good. We'll get the list of companies to be researched by Friday, and then 
Russell and Calvin kind of, will take it from there and then uh, present next week. Does that sound good? Um, Sounds like a plan. Okay, okay. cool. Let's move on to, uh, to Adam and uh, mission statement update. Adam, do you wanna take over the screen? Yep. Yeah, cool. Can you see it? Yep. Oh, great. Okay. Um, so uh, I just took this from about three or two or three articles um, I found online. Um, task was to um, quickly in, I believe, 80, 70 seconds, um, enlighten you into what the vision versus mission is. So this is not my writing. This is from a couple articles I tacked together. So mission, vision, vision values. We've heard this trio rattled off countless times, rapid fire, like they're one catchy phrase, when in fact they are three distinct concepts for organizations. The difference between a vision and a mission, um, the vision statement focus on tomorrow and what the organization wants to become. The mission statement focuses on today and, the, and what the organization does. Um, so one example here is uh, TED. Uh, their mission is spread ideas. Um, the vision is we believe passionately in the power of ideas to change attitudes, lives, and ultimately the world. So um, essentially their vision is uh, uh, telling the why, like why, why are they spreading ideas, you know, to hopefully change the world for the positive. Um, so your mission statement drives the company. Um, it is what you do, uh, the core business, and it comes from the objectives and what it takes to reach those objectives. So it's what you're doing every day. It also shapes your company's culture. The vision statement gives the company direction. It's the future of the business, um, the goal of the business, which then provides the purpose. Um, the vision statement is about, is about what you want to become. It's aspirational. And again, let me mention, this is people's opinions. Um, we could take this in any way we want. Um, I just wanted to give an idea of what people have been, some companies use for their vision versus mission. So for Amazon mission, we strive to offer our customers the lowest possible prices, the best available selection and the utmost convenience. Their, mission, their vision is to be the earth's most com customer centric company where customers can find and discover anything they might want to buy online. Um, one last example, uh, Patagonia. Uh, mission to, to build the best product, cause no unnecessary harm, and to use business to inspire and implement solutions to the environmental crisis. The vision, a love of wild and beautiful places demands the participation in the fight to save them and to help reverse the steep decline in the overall environmental health of our planet, why it works, um, building an impl uh, implementation in Patagonia's mission convey what they achieve each day. The tone of the vision changes dramatically, showing a company who will rise up to protect the future. Okay, so this is what I wrote as a, just a theoretical for us, co-op store. Um, and uh, just to kind of fit in with these other examples. So the co-op store, um, their mission is to enable and embolden all people to consume with less environmental impact and to engage in cooperation and fairness in all our practices for the sake of our customers, employees, and partners. Our vision is a healthy, clean, and just planet that um, can only exist if we work together. The co-op store envisions a just and cooperative economy that gives all people control and clarity in every purchase that they make. Every person deserves the opportunity to easily and affordably choose the eco-conscious option. Sustainable living can and should be available to the masses. And I put in a little why it works. Um, if the co-op store gives people the opportunity to shop kindly, avoid plastic and avoid abuses typical to our existing supply chains, we can achieve the vision of a more equitable, healthy, cooperative planet. One yields the other. Um, the mission can be enacted every day to create the vision of the sustainable future that we desire. So that's my brief 
intro into it and i i really want to be quick on that so um i'd love to hear uh what you guys just think of that part of things i want faith thanks for uh presenting again um great work i uh I personally like it, so I'll just end it there. I like it. I think consuming with less environmental impact, I think that's in the mission statement. I think that's really good. Um, how, do, how does this fit with that uh, TED talk that we watched? Does the vision kind of play as the, the why and fulfills that role a bit more rather than the, you know, the mission. The mission is the doing, the vision is the why or the propelling force. To a degree, yeah, I think so. I would say, I would say that um, the, the vision is a how. Because it is- Or the uh, what. What, you, what, what would you envision or the what, yeah. And, and the mission is a why. We want to enable, embolden. Mm -hmm. This is why we're doing it. Um, it, it is, um, so yeah, like the mission or includes the why, and it also includes um, what, if it makes sense. Because we are saying like to um, enable people to, which is like uh, enabling and emboldening people to consume, is the why we want to do this and then the cooperation and fairness practices that's the how actually and i was going to mention that i don't think that's that it is necessary it's not necessary to include that in the mission in my opinion i am i have the idea that the mission should be like like very short and straightforward and with like few key words because um, I've read I've read a book where they mentioned that when companies have like a mission that has like too many keywords or that can go in many in, in, in different directions, then it's hard to to remember why you're doing it. What is your mission? So like what like we can get lost. Okay, like our mission is to in in my opinion is to to make uh, make it easy so make it sustainable attainable make it easy for everybody to shop without plastic and, and this now we're doing it we are we happen to be doing it uh, with a co-op right but the co-op is not the mission itself it's just the way we're going to do it i don't know if it makes sense yep uh, no i think that i think that makes sense sure um yeah i, I, I i'm i'm with you there on um keeping the mission really succinct. Um, uh, I guess um, my thought is uh, the vision, like the, the mission is to enable and embolden all people to consume with less environmental impact. It's not like we're, um, that if, if people consume with less environmental impact, then our vision of a healthier, cleaner and just planet can therefore exist. The environment mm -hmm. will be improved. That's the vision to improve the environment. Um, but let's go, uh, the, let's see. Um, well, this, this brings up one, yeah, sorry. You can go. No, 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 actually, Vivek, go ahead. No, you, can, you can go do that. I'll, I'll, I'll speak up afterwards. I, I think you're going to show something. I don't know what you're exactly going to do. Well, I, I was going to go back to that. Um, um, to the, the different suggestions? Yeah, the Miro survey. Um, they just got updated, but I don't think it's that uh, we, yeah, we could go over it, but go ahead and say whatever you want. I, I think there's, there's a couple things. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, I don't know if everyone got a chance to check out that, that TED talk. I, I assume everyone did. Um, and I don't know if people, so I think that was one of the points about this discussion was like, you know, did, did we think differently? Do we have feel different feelings about the, the votes that we made and the, the, the vision state or the mission statements talked about? Um, I think it was, I really appreciate you sh explaining the difference between the vision and mission statement. Like now I see more clearly why it would make sense to have it as part of our literature. And I, I, personally, at least that's how I, I feel. Um, but, um, you know, um, I think the one tricky thing that I'm, uh, I, I would like 
that maybe we we think about like versus like long versus short like you know um and and the, that bit that ted talk didn't talk about it like it, it talks about sort of high level like what what is a comp like how a good company sort of expresses itself to its customers to its, its team but like i think one thing we've been all lacking is and i wanted to bring this up is like do like i don't know how to judge like i feel like i don't know how to judge a good mission statement or a good vision statement like you've given some examples and those are those sound good like but i don't know is you know um like if i'm judging it right it almost feels like if i were to um I don't know, like if i had no knowledge of like art at all or something and like i was looking at a couple paintings and you know someone presented some paintings like would i be the like right, ju right judge of like what is a good painting you know, or a good piece of art. And I think, I think it would help all of us because as far as I know, like none of us are like pros at mission statements or vision statements. Like you, you definitely spend some time looking at them. Um, but like perhaps it would be helpful for all of us to like have some gauge of like what makes these, like makes it really powerful. Like versus just our opinion, which is like some, some of us might think a shorter mission statement is better. Or someone might think it's like a better, like a longer one's better. Or, you know, someone might think, you know, Combining them, or I, I don't know if we're like we're the right judge. Like I, in retrospect, I feel like we might have jumped a, a jumped like a little quick to like just add our opinion on something. But, um, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. I, so what do you suggest we do, or or like, um, like you think we? How can we be? How can we criticize our own work if, or like if or be judges of our own work and without uh, needing any uh, like extra outside parties to, to tell us we're doing we're going in the right direction? So that's the question. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's we a little bit like a poem where just like is this word necessary? Because in a poem you you sort of you don't want any unnecessary words. You want all the words to be just the right word. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I think that I, I wonder um, if uh, if this is feeling like too monumentous of a task. And I wonder if if we just try one on like it's a new pair of pants, and we have a sunset date, and we say by sunset date we're gonna say this one's no longer a mission statement let's pick another after we've like worn it for a while and see how it felt or maybe we just say hey this sunsets at the creation of the actual company beyond the steering or i'm sorry business beyond the steering committee um and then we you know we won't feel like oh we didn't know what we were doing or it's i believe it's always um, amendable based on um consensus here but i also feel like perhaps, um, you know, we're feeling the weight that goes behind crafting a mission statement. And we're going to spend a lot of time trying to make it fit perfectly when we need to experience it some and like, see what it's like to reference it and, and get feedback from it. So I, I wonder if we just pick one sooner, but agree that we're not the perfect poets. Uh, and that, um, and that it will have its its end time. This this was this is for the steering committee, and that's to get us going, kind of thing. I think that's a great. Um, that's a great yeah. point, Calvin. But uh, the only thing I would just only reason I like I actually bring this up is it's coming to a, like a later agenda item that I've added. It it just like yeah, I mean, I'll bring it up now. It's just like I didn't feel like um you know we were like we were exactly like understood exactly how to do a mission statement or a vision statement. Like now, like Adam's more clarified exactly how they, how, like what the distinctions are, but even it would be helpful even just to like understand like how, like some of the, how, how people or marketers break these down, like to make it yeah. um, powerful and punchy and valuable yeah. for both for customers and, and users to make that judgment. But maybe, maybe right. for now we can just pick one and, and then, like you said, we can always, um, we can always like change it later, especially when we break into committees and there's a committee that does like the marketing and they'll they'll fix it maybe yeah i think this one's pretty good this mission vision why it works i i think that it's pretty good like russell said so do we think that we 
do you think that we could try to get consensus on using this as a as a mission statement um, tentatively? Well, I like the idea of having it be a mission statement for the steering committee. I like that too. I think Calvin, Calvin, you said that one. Okay, yeah. so do we vote on that? Yeah, should we do, a, you want to do a vote? Let's do, um, I do. just, uh, I guess, yeah. So yes is, um, should we say yes is uh, taking this mission and vision to be the uh, mission and vision for the steering, just for the steering committee? And then no is, I guess we keep, we keep working on it. Because did anyone like, uh, did anyone take a second look at uh, the statements that are on Miro? Because I think there there were few that were added or oh, were added. There? So like, actually I took off my points. I, I, I thought something happened there and my, my points were somewhere else. Not that where they should be, but I also noticed that uh, I think three people, uh, like three new statements were added. So I thought now we will be kind of reconsidering again, but. That might be like that's a true. Through all of them again, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I never... That's true, we, 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 we did, that was one of the action items, wasn't it, to retally? Did yeah. we, did we, and we did do that? Uh, yeah, I retallied them. Okay. Did you, so did you retally and then build, uh, write this one from, the real retally or um no okay. i it was just kind of a separate well, well the, there was one question though but like so i mean i guess if one of the questions was did anyone feel like they wanted to change after their after their viewing in the video like did they feel like their scoring was accurate um and then secondly i, I i'm just like on a i i after like reconsidering that video i did take another shot at writing a mission statement that I thought like more captured that why component, but I, I don't know if anyone got a chance to look at it. Did you add it? Is that the one at the bottom or one of the like ones? The, the, sec, the, the, the third to last and second okay. to last. Uh, here. So I didn't, um, I guess I- There's also like lots of comments on the other ones. So I was just really thinking, um, I guess people added it and now we should kind of rethink and um maybe, maybe yeah. to, to calvin's point maybe we should just this is like is maybe. it good enough for now we kind of come back to it so we don't get like in this loop of going over this mission. or or i uh, or you know do we have one that's <laughs> maybe not tentative but um yeah we we assign a a committee and the committee provides and presents the research for you know, what what makes up a mission statement and a vision statement, which ones have worked well for companies. They do that presentation, we do our final edits, and then we, we take a final go at it, but but later on. We, but I feel like we already kind of did that. Like Adam yeah. did that work. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, yeah, I'm gonna be quiet. So I did see, I did see the video. Um, and I did, I did spend a lot of time thinking about it. I don't know if we really have gotten to why, to your point, Vivek, um, but I still did like where I voted before. So I didn't really, I didn't change it. Now I didn't, I, I didn't notice that there were the couple at the bottom. So I guess I didn't consider those, Three. consider the new ones. So maybe that would change it a little bit, but. I think but there I, are three new ones and there were some revisions. Um, okay. I wouldn't mind like going over again, but if uh, everyone wants just to stay with this one for now. Uh, yeah, I personally didn't re like uh, change my 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 vote because you still have the Fibonacci sequence number. So um, I would like to 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 vote again if that's okay. okay. Does it have, how many other people want to vote again? Uh, if if we're allowing for an out. editing period and like to to give suggestions, because today is when I finally 
got around to voting and I even okay. gave suggestions to some of them like option I I said oh if there were one thing changed I would really really love option I whomever wrote that um I I'd be um pleased with uh voting again after an edit period so based on what we have here so maybe not doing a long presentation and, and such again but um you know individually leaving suggestions having an edit by date and then making sure you vote after that edit by date, I think would be. Okay. Beneficial. Can we do edits until Friday and then uh, voting from Friday till the next meeting? That's good. Does anyone, anyone opposed to that? Mm -hmm. Well, Adam, can, can I ask you to like, uh, can we have, uh, um, can we view what you just presented? I would like to like, read it again to myself. Yeah. The whole thing would it be possible to say you post it somewhere on mirror or sure. maybe next to the to this to this uh, frame yeah and yeah just mm -hmm. sure thank you yeah it was great and, uh, yeah it's very helpful Um, I can also share some like uh, the only thing the way I can think of it is like pictures of the of the book that I read like the pages about like why is better short and long I can I can add those pictures right next to the to the frame if it's helpful okay there's notes yes thank you yeah, <laughs> yeah that's good okay so we'll make changes to it uh, and make some edits until Friday and then um Everyone will have to re, uh, vote again um, on their mission statement, and we'll look at it uh, next week. Does Adam? Do you want to continue to work work solo on this, or or does anybody want to? I don't actually. That's I'll leave that at that point. Like tallying or things like that. Like, would you like help? Uh, tallying takes about thirty seconds, so okay. no stress there. Yeah. All right. Appreciate it though. I wonder if it'd be good to, maybe not this time, but there are kind of a lot now. Maybe we do, um, maybe we pick the top four or something and do like a, what is that called? Where you do like a, you vote, you know, you, you cut out the bottom, like, you know, bottom candidates and then vote again. It's uh, an runoff. instant runoff is, instant is runoff. one type of voting where you cut off like a yeah. the lowest threshold. Does that make sense? Was that overthinking it? But that would be two voting, or how does it work? Well, I guess we would, you know, we would do, we would tally it next week, and then and then vote again. Uh -huh. I guess we can decide then. It was just just something that came to mind. Okay. I think if the votes are spread uh, like widely, maybe uh, then yes, we can consider it. Otherwise, maybe okay. there's like five there have zero points. So automatically okay. they will be cut off. Okay, cool. We can, so, yeah, we can. Paul, or we? For now, yes. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll all vote again uh, on Friday or after Friday until the next week. Cool. So let's move on to the um, follow up on the Miro training. Okay. Uh, so we had a new idea, sort of, to. In a way, I mean, it's a kind of uh, proposition for us. Uh, instead of uh, taking like the precious time of the meeting, we actually recorded. I mean, Erica um, uh, created this uh, nice uh, frame, and then we uh, recorded a video where we are kind of presenting um, what is on that frame. So we we propose that you guys just watch it at home. Not, now we show it where it is, what is there, and if everybody can go through it, read it, and watch the video that we recorded, um, we could save time. <laughs> okay, yeah, we are kind of running a little uh, behind, so. So that we want to do that after the call or just send it out later? Like Homework, yeah, we can it's see. on Miro. I think Eric is trying to share. I'm going to show it now, oh. where to find it, and okay. how is it actually organized, and then everybody can 
that could be an action item that everybody could watch this video. Okay, that's good. Please she is showing. Erica, yeah. are you there? Yeah. So yeah, am I a mirror pro? So maybe you can you can show it. Yep. Thank you. Do you got it, or do you okay. want to do? It's on the how to Miro. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you. It's the frame two. Do you got it, or do you want me to do it? Uh, if you can do it, that'd be great. Oh, Thank okay. you. Okay. This is it. Um, is it here yeah, at the top? It's that is that the um actually the next one to the right. Oh. There's two more. There's the practice, and then there's a new one. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. So yeah, we are going to cover like all there's to know about sticky notes, about how to add text, and structuring our board content. So mm -hmm. it's the same as last week. Like if you click on the card, um, if you open the card, you will see, um, yeah, like some like no explanation. Idea. And then at the bottom, there's the link you can visit. And then, um, yeah, you just like, like you can go to the sticky notes and check and check it out. Like, and these are pictures of like where the things are found. Here is the link to the video where it says, please watch this video in the bottom left. Or the Buddha's YouTuber, just kidding. And then, um, and then on the right, it, it, there's another frame that's completely empty that you can use to, to practice <laughs> what what we are showing you, right? trying to show there. And that's it. And is like, yeah, it's pretty, yeah, simple. <laughs> it's basically what we would have done during the meeting, but we just recorded it. Yeah, cool. So Thanks should, we, for preparing should that. we watch the video first or should we be clicking on the cards? Like what, like what's the process of operation would you say? Um, maybe, yeah, like I will read the frame, like try to like explore the frame and then watch the video. Maybe you we'll have more context. <laughs> I think it's also individual for me. I'm more like watching video first and then going there to know, but it's very individual. It's a, yeah. And, and just to be clear, is that cool with everybody? Like, do we feel like we can honestly um, take this on, like beyond just, you know, sometimes, and as some, like, Sometimes these tasks can be like, oh, like oh, it's not a big deal, but obviously this is um, would be helpful. Uh, but I just want to make sure people feel like comfortable that they would be able to do this, or, or they'll make time to do it. Meaning, skip it, or are you going to skip it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe no, that you can leave your practice on the practice frame. Just uh -huh, so <laughs> you have to. This is homework. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> No, I think this is good. I think, I mean, the more I've gotten to Demiro, the more I've liked it. So, yeah. so the more practice, the better, I think, <laughs> even if it's just a couple minutes. Yeah, I like it too. It, it struggles on a few of my computers, but I like it. It works, it works pretty good on my phone, to be, to be honest. I was oh, messing with it on my phone the other day. Um, but yeah, I do like that you guys are, I, I, I prefer to learn on my own. So the video is probably the best for me. Um, so I thank you for that. Cool. 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 Yeah, it, it looks really nice. The frame you guys, the last frame was awesome. This one looks um, even more handy, so thanks. Guys. And I do like how we're doing, we're already doing like education, right? We're already learning how to teach each other and teach communities, so. Yeah, keep that's actually good, a really interesting idea to just have like a big mirror boards for like different educational things of you know, where to go to compost, how to compost, what what containers are good, what are not good. Pub a public mm -hmm. Well, well yeah. you, you get, uh, I think you guys may or may not remember, but education is a key principle of cooperative, so. Yeah, yeah. Because, um, yeah, I'm glad we're, we're doing that. It helps us all become not just gears in the machine, but uh, <laughs> uh, informed owners, so. Cool. Maybe we could create a frame like what just Brad said, and, mm -hmm. and then it's kind of like almost, I mean, brainstorming or giving your own ideas. If if you guys want, I can create that frame and 
everybody can uh, write something that I can. For what? For, for or let's say, uh, where to compost or what to compost or not, what not, what plastic is uh, good or not. Um, what we like, just... like a sustainability line of frames. Yeah, that well, we can new, other, new our habits we can pass to each other. Oh, okay. Because that's yeah. how, for example, I learned the most from you know other yeah. my friends' habits. So, so maybe our best habit or something, our best sustainability habit, maybe a board for that or something. Wonderful. It's not. I think a board. That's good. A frame only. That's, sorry, a frame. I mean, a frame. I think that's a good idea to kind of kind of remind out that idea or to test out that using Miro for that. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of our key value. Uh, process we did today right yes. I learned a lot like I would have never thought to bring my own package to a restaurant like that oh, yeah. that makes so that makes such a good idea like yeah, do you think, yeah. Do that. yeah yeah we do yeah we do. I never you made thought. you to pay for it <laughs> 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 you know what's great about that too is that I think you show up at a restaurant with a container and other people will be like what what is that why do you have a container you get to talk about it right Right. So it's like automatically like which is which promoting. is why I was which is why I was saying the brand like having a brand branding wise yeah. where people brought their they brought their sustainable mm. co-op package to like mm -hmm. Outback yeah. and you're like <laughs> yes <laughs> right because that's free advertisement exactly like fun yeah, kind of like uh, we uh, you know we kind of like look oh our friend has this fancy container that folds too flat I'm like oh where did you get that <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it, so just to be clear, so Calvin knows, so action items to review the is a that board, and also I think, Ula, did you volunteer to create yeah. a okay, create a frame to just to share our favorite um, tips, tips, uh, how how, we... tips and habits on living sustainably, so we can all learn from one another, share as you desire, I guess. Nice, cool, yeah, that's good. All right, let's move on. Uh, Vec, this is you next. Uh, uh, that... How do we make sure we are making smart decisions? Yeah, um, scraps. You got it. Yeah, I, I didn't create a um, presentation for this. I should have. I was thinking about it, but I, I just didn't get a chance to. So, um, like uh, the mission, the mission statement thing later on to me felt like um, one of the one of the areas where, you know, like can we make smarter decisions? How do we make smarter decisions? How do we all like? Um, you know, if we're, if we're not marketers or if we're not a uh, developer or if we're not, you know, um, like human resources, like how, how can us as owners make smart decisions going forward, right, um, as a group? And so it just like made me think like, yeah, um, how, like while um, we saw some great examples and Adam put some great examples together for um, mission statements and some of us wrote some of our own as well. Um, I still didn't, at the end of the day, I didn't feel like I was, um, like I could discern a really good one versus maybe an okay one. Like even if I read Nikes versus, I don't know, um, okay. Adidas or uh, New Balance, like would I know, like if New Balance's mission statement is better than Nikes, like are they're equally good? Like I didn't know, I wasn't sure, like I didn't know the rules of a good mission statement. And so I, I kept like thinking to myself, like, I would love for us, and this is just, just initial kickoff kind of conversation. I don't, I'm not trying to solidify anything, but just trying to get like a feel of if people agree and, and try to create some sort of process on uh, our system to like uh, allow all of us who um, are, are owners right now, we don't have particular roles of any sort and we're trying to make the best decisions possible around anything, um, you know, today and maybe around the value propositions and tomorrow might be about like where are we going to be located um uh or like how are we get to market like how do we as people that may not be pros in certain things um provide it get an insightful perspective and right now like the way i'm thinking about it is a little bit like also that that um uh, um video that i sh that we, we shared um a TED talk and Erica and I talked a little bit about this and I, you know, I took some inspiration from her so she, maybe she can also add to it. But um, is like thinking about this and like a why, how, what, and then um, 
uh, like having some metrics. Meaning, so if we're looking at, if we're gonna take on a task, we should, uh, we should be asking ourselves like, why are we taking on this task? And be very clear to the rest of the team. Like, why are we doing this? Like, why is this important? And then, then talk about, so then we understand like, okay, does this, does this make sense? Like as a group, can we like, does this logically make sense? Okay. And then how it's like, um, how do we resolve that, that task that we want to do? And then what does it look like? And then finally, the, uh, like the last key component is like, how do we judge that? Like, how, is there some sort of metric that we did like uh, judge it against? Is there like, these are the rules of, of writing a vision or mission statement, or these are the rules of like, uh, of how, to, like I even asked you, Brad, you know, in the, in Slack, how do we judge if we're doing this business model canvas correctly? Like, I don't, I'm not like a pro business model canvas. Like, I, I think we're tackling it, you know, correctly and we're, you know, being insightful, but like, I don't know. And, and you provided like an insightful answer. You're like, well, they should be all connecting, you know, and there should be like, you know, anything that's like kind of out in a zone without connection to another square in the box. And I was like, okay, that seems, that seems pretty reasonable. Um, you know, so trying to think about like a processy um in the future so that we can all make really wise decisions and we don't we don't just get lucky that we like put together a you know our good business model canvas or we got lucky that we um you know figured out a good launch campaign but like we actually have a system and, and that's sort of the what i'm putting together a little bit is like uh is this first when we present something or do something thinking about the why thinking how we're going to execute it what it's going to look like and finally and um, how do we determine if we, if this is good, like the final product. Mm. Yes. Um, yeah, we've mentioned that. And then uh, right after I watched the, the talk and we talked and then they say like, why don't we use the same golden circle? I think he called it. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, and may, maybe like every time we have an idea or like we're tackling like some research or like, um, or like we are going to do values or mission or everything. We use the same like, when, okay, we're gonna present it and then we, we can even create a template and say like, why? And you start telling the, the team why, why you think it's a good idea or why your research says that's important and then how, and then finally, what is that you're proposing? just as a means to, to, to always uh, back up our, our proposals, basically, or our ideas. And also like something that I found uh, very helpful from the video is like the failure and success example that he gave. Why, um, uh, why would uh, some people su succeeded doing the same task and some people failed? So like, I feel like because we're new at everything we're doing so far and or at least in my experience doing research and like what has worked for others and what hasn't is very important and always like um giving examples uh, as a team like um and, and analyzing as a team because so we don't have to go back and back and asking ourselves which is kind of what happened now with the with the vision, right? Like, like it's, it, it's good, it sounds good, but uh, why are we going back and forth? Maybe because we didn't have a system of how to, how to, how to come up with these, uh, with these ideas that are uh, the mission, not the vision, that are, so, that are so important. And then if we have like a system of like saying, first you give the proposal, then we study it, we, we, and, and then the next meeting we can, we can talk about it. But having like a template that we have to fill out when we have a proposal, I think it will it will be helpful. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, I'm not, uh, I guess right off the top of my head, I'm not convinced every idea can fit into that where um, somebody goes off and does research and comes with a proposal and then we vote on it. And I guess I'm thinking specifically about the business model canvas. I think that we do all have to come together and kind of uh, brainstorm each of these or maybe just brainstorm all together. I guess we could um, 
have people go and come back and have a list for one block or two, but I don't know if it really quite. One thing that comes to mind, very different from my experience. The, the, the business model canvas, like the way I would like, I would have thought of like handling it would be like, mm -hmm. you just, just so like everyone's on the same page, like, you know, why we're doing it, like how we're going to execute on it, what it will finally look like at the end, generally speaking. And then lastly, or maybe not lastly, because Eric is saying like, here, maybe use some examples of getting that. And then lastly, like, this is sort of like how I would judge that this is good or like i talked to uh you know a couple guys who like, like your friend you mentioned i like talked to my friend who's a pro at business model canvas and this is how he said is like a a good way to judge if you've done it well or like i walk i i read a couple blog pieces and i uh watch a couple youtube videos and this is what they said is like great execution mm -hmm. right so then yeah. that way we're all on the same page and we're like we know how to, to generally judge it like generally judge like we've done a good job we know exactly why we we're doing this. Like we know how we're going to execute against it, and then and then finally, it doesn't have to be something super elaborate. But just anyway, the, mm -hmm. the point is just trying to create a system, and it doesn't have to. This doesn't be the final discussion on it. I kind of want to put it out there and hear what people thought about it. If I, I'm like, am I way off base, or like, or do you guys agree, or what? No, I, I would like to add a quick, a quick example. For instance, now we're gonna discuss about what we don't want to do, right? Or we don't want to put in the store. It would be interesting to say, like, like for instance, I don't want plastic at all. So why not, right? Uh, and I will have to, to 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 share with you why not, and how not, and finally, what's gonna be the solution? That's like an example. Like maybe when you oppose something and you propose something, just back it up with these three um, answers. Yeah. Back it up with the reason, I think. I also think that, well, here's my here's my ten cents. So, we, Vivek, Vivek, you said like it would be nice if we had a decision making process, so we knew when we were making smart decisions collectively and our on our own. And I think that there is also like indecision, right? Like we've kind of just chosen not to to decide on the mission statement, but we also decided to have an action. So that's good. I was happy with how we resolved that. Um, so I think we sort of have that, but I also do think that like the indecision that we've had on a few few occasions is a, is also a decision. It's, the de it's a decision not to take action or to decide, which kind of is, kind of is a bummer, but sometimes it makes sense. Um, and I think that if we looked into like, um, what was I? The like, yeah, I forget where I was going with that. But sorry, everyone. Go back. Okay. I don't know, Adam or Jennifer or Calvin. Anyone else want to chime in on this con concept? Yeah. Or Ula, sorry. <laughs> I mean, for me, also, I think having sort of a structure, a plan, um, would it would make everything faster and smoother. And I don't know if easier, but I think. Um, yeah, that would make our life easier and we would move with the faster speed. <laughs> Russell? Yeah, so I was going to say like the last piece of mine, because you reminded me, um, Ula, is yeah, faster. So like, what's the big deal if we voted and someone was like, yeah, absolutely not. We just can't, I, like, I just can't go forward with Adam's thing. And then that's it, right? But we can still, we can still, uh, Re reiterate right so i think it's okay to try to go to a vote even if we don't pass i think if we start using those muscles i think we can start to get faster and we can start to be better at judge trusting our intuition and in our guts mm -hmm. collectively and alone so so like if we if we had voted like it might not have passed but that wouldn't have changed as much like we'd still have to have action items so i think going on the limb and just voting I think it might be okay. So voting, voting is a di it feels like a different like problem that I, I'm trying to talk about. Like I'm trying to talk about just making a like smart decisions. Um, like or did you, like do you did you feel like you knew the process or like had to correctly judge a a good mission statement? Like yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, like so I I mean. I would just, you know, pick what I think is good enough for now at this, the state that we're in. Like my intuition is 
if we picked something, it's better than having nothing. And we can always fix it, like Calvin was saying. So like, if we can, especially if we make decisions, if we make decisions through voting or whatever means, and we get good at it, 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 um, it makes it less painful for when we make mistakes as well, because we can just vote, vote to fix them. <laughs> Um, or we could vote, or we could decide to fix them. Um, so I think it's just figuring out how to work that muscle. I love, like I, I love, I love both of these. So I love the idea of trying to approach future challenges like mission statements with that structure. I think this is very wise to bring up, Vivek. And then I think Russell, I think uh, so true. Democracy is difficult, or or a voting system is difficult, especially with consensus. I think that's going to be new to most of us. So the more we use it, the more we experiment, the more we're willing to fail and then correct and, and move forward, I think is really, really cool. So I think both of you are, are pushing really wise thoughts right now. They're just applying to different things. One is a decision already made and one is for future decisions and how to approach them. Yeah. This is why dictatorships are so efficient. <laughs> just tell us what to do yeah. right it's on you <laughs> looks like you like this uh, the, Adam, the Adam that's got the American flag thing but he's he very much like a president right now when I look, <laughs> when I look at him he's like <laughs> alright well anyway th I, this was just like initial conversation kickoff this wasn't to, to try to like set something in stone um, perhaps, perhaps I can come like if people think it's worthy, I can try to think of it like more thoughtfully, present something for future decisions, uh, or for so or or, or or take like how we um, perhaps like take on new projects or um, action items or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then like maybe I can try to create a system, and if that system is agreed upon by the team, then we can start using it. But if if we don't like it, but I don't I don't want to even start it if folks don't think it's worthy. Is is you guys think it's like a worthwhile effort or i think adding structure is good i think we're light on structure right now and um i i couldn't see going i think it would be good to add a little structure even if um you know we could always remove it but i think adding more structure yeah. wouldn't be bad yeah like for instance when i was doing the research on like how steering committee gets com get compensated i felt like really lost like i like it was kind of hard to put it together it was hard to reach oh, the decision. It, like, it, it's still like in the air still. So yeah, it would be good to have some, some system. <laughs> if we can do um, the last, like everybody's last comments here and then and move on. Just so uh, just, we have a couple more things to do. I've really liked your and, your and Jennifer's work on, the, uh, on that stuff, Erica. So I think you did great. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe there's action items that are you thinking maybe there's action items that are left over from that project that you'd like to go back to um or no, that not, not, people... not really but we haven't actually decided but that it will, we're gonna decide in the future how we're gonna get compensated mm -hmm. we're trying we're testing the forms to got got your work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. speaking of forms Do, i think that's the next thing does anyone have a uh, one more comment for Vivek and his, uh, his proposal for proposals. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. So, cool. so is there? So I, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of like feel like I'm in limbo. I don't know if I should or shouldn't do anything. But, uh, but I, 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 you seem like we're game for it. Yeah, right I now. was saying yes. Did anyone? Um, I don't object. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think Calvin said it pretty well. You, you both Russell Russell's idea of trusting your intuition is a good idea, and your idea of wanting to make good decisions is also admirable. Well, I think specifically around Vivek, you were asking specifically about uh, adding, um, creating like a form or something. Or just like a system, yeah, maybe a former system, system of just like okay. to, to like help yeah. us um, get closer to um, ideally trying to make the most informed decisions, even if we're not experts in a particular field. Mm -hmm. That's sort of my, my goal. Does anyone oppose that? Okay. Oh, you said oppose. 
or oppose. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm. I like it. <laughs> okay. Okay. And um. Cool. Is that cool? Okay. Cool. Okay. So I'll I'll add it as an action item. I'll put it, I'll put some effort behind that. Okay. Thanks, guys. Uh, okay, so um, I, me and Erica get this last thing as well. Yeah. Um, once again, I, this all this all also put in um, like a proper presentation, and I'll send out with the follow up email. Um, I didn't get a chance to. So um, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Um, Erica, can, can you mind bringing up that one of the forms? Is that okay? Yeah. So we we remember we decided to break up the forms. Uh, and we're gonna test this out. The one form is just like a weekly thing. We're gonna uh, just to to you know um, keep track and sort of get an idea of like uh, like how things are going individually, like for ourselves, and like just keep track of like general timing and so forth, so that we have some sort of data point that later on we'll probably use for uh, just general compensation and making sure that we everyone gets fairly compensated um, in the future. Uh, but then there was also. Um, we, we created a separate form for just get, get, like giving each other um, feedback uh, to one another. And um, I think this is like, A, it's like something almost every organization does. Um, but beyond that, I, um, um, like data shows it, it like, um, like if, you know, if uh, people don't get feedback beyond just like, uh, you know, learning and growing they oftentimes don't feel like they have, uh, they're being recognized or seen for their work uh, and they often disengage. So I think giving feedback is just like an excellent opportunity to, to recognize one another as a team. And like all of us have been working pretty hard on this project for the last couple of weeks and months. And so I think this is a great opportunity to recognize each other and to also um, uh, making sure to, uh, um, to, to try to, help each other improve. And, and so I did like a bunch of, I, I have some experience from, from my managerial days and, and also from business school and stuff like that where we talk a lot about this. And so I had done a little bit more research and preparation for this conversation. So that's what, sort of the value of, I think, um, these feedback forms. Uh, and then just the other point I wanted to, to uh, share was like, how do you give feedback? Uh, because I think while we think we know how to do it, oftentimes we, we are not the best at it. There's a lot of data that shows that. And so um, usually there's um, there's two, like two parts, giving and receiving. And, and the giving part is trying to um, try to think both about the positive and the constructive, not just the constructive, but um, but also thinking about the positive. What are the areas that the efforts have been doing really well in or really appreciated and it's like been refreshing? And, and also what are some of the areas that, um, they can use improvement and in both of these, but particularly for the constructive side and um, trying to use examples of areas where they, you know, they could be uh, improved and like being very specific about that. Um, if you're blurry or abstract, it's really hard for the person to understand exactly what you're talking about. Um, and then along with being very clear uh, about the areas where they can improve and giving the examples, but also is uh, tips and suggestions for them to actually do that thing better. Or, um, and maybe if you don't know, you can just like, hey, why don't you Google it? I don't know how to do this better personally, but you know, I'm sure like someone on Google does or something like that. And then lastly, trying to be concise about that feedback. So um, in all those things combined allows for someone to get some feedback that's useful and handy and will help them grow. And then if you think this about like this in a more meta way, like um, zoomed out way, we're all been part of this thing, putting this together. You know, every one of us is showing up to meetings and thinking about different problems and issues. And so if each of us can continue to be mindful of our blind spots through our friends, our, our colleagues and friends feedback, then we can all each individually get better and all long-term get closer and closer to this like problem that we, we all desperately like to address. And so um, that's, that's sort of the, the process of giving feedback. And then on the other end, other end of it, getting feedback is, you know, trying to be as open to it. You know, when you're like reading your own feedback from uh, one of your colleagues, just thinking, okay, like I'm open to this, like, it's cool. Like I want to improve, I want to become better and, and, and also be exciting to, to see it and see how you're doing in, in, in the 
eyes of your colleagues. So um, yeah, that's um, that's basically it. Um, I, I, once again, I don't think this should be, we should think of this as an opportunity to grow um, and most importantly, get towards our mission. So, um, and then at the, if there if there's some feedback that you're confused about or want like more clarification, we should be, we should feel comfortable like asking the person who provided that feedback um, for insights or additional like discussion. And, you know, I, I, I think of you, all of you, like not just as colleagues and, uh, but like friends to a degree. Uh, obviously I've known people like Adam for decades now um, and others I'm sort of like get to know, but um, I think this is an opportunity for us to get closer and to, to help each other be uh, the best version of ourselves um, as we work on this project. So, uh, and it's a pretty concise form, but I just wanted to give some background on that. And then lastly, Eric, I think wanted to, um, is gonna show like who's gonna give feedback to who just, uh, that was the goal is like two pieces, two people for, uh, we give back, give feedback mm -hmm. to each person. Yeah, um, I think I, because of the time and because um, I, I wanna ask, um, Calvin, if he wants to be included in, in, in this month, because you would like, this, this will be like for March. And so I could like uh, include you in the rotation. Uh, Maybe we next one though, Erica, because you know, yeah. you just okay. join, okay. you know. That's okay. Okay, okay, all good. If So this, let me share with you how, then how it will be. And I mean, I, it is already on the, on the mirror board, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can just, uh, you can use. Yep, pretty basic for now. Should we send and... these out? Sorry? Should we send these out? Or we can maybe yeah, send yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll send, show the link. It's also on Miro. So it's right we here. Can... So the, the names, yeah. are, oh, this is the, that's the form. These are the forms already, they are on Miro too. So like you check, you say, I'll, I have to do, I don't know, like Ula's and Jennifer's, I just click on theirs. And then when you click on it, you can go here to the actual form. So wait, can, you, can you go back to the, the spreadsheet? Yep. Sorry, it's like I have to, Share something okay. new each Same time. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. At the same time, it's also very transparent. So if someone would like to see what, uh, like what, let's say, um, what you said about two of us, right? I mean, what kind of feedback you gave, we can also read it. Okay. So how does this works? How this works is everybody's going to do one a month. So you, my once two. A month, once my a month, you're going to you're just going to get uh, feedback on. Uh, two people. So for for um, Adam, he's going to get input from Annie and Brad, um, and Brad's also going to give feedback on Jennifer. So he's doing two, and I'm doing both Ula and uh, Erica. Um, Adam. Oh what? Well, I'm okay. doing uh, like no. No, Vivek's doing yeah. Adam and Ula. The, the, yeah. Vivek, you're doing, uh, you're doing Adam and Ula. Oh, so my mistake, right. Sorry, my mistake. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do yours, Vivek and Adam. So everybody will do two and everybody will get feedback from two people. Every month. Every month. So yeah. this is for March. The last, we'll, the last meeting of the month. Okay. Yeah, so this is our action item for everybody mm -hmm. this week. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we rotate again somehow. Yep. So we'll, we'll share the thing with you. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, so, but I'll I'll share the link, or maybe we can shoot if you can add it to the follow up email. Yeah, that will, yep. Then it will, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then this is the I'm sending out the just a weekly normal form that we all fill. I just put sent that out in the chat. Yeah, Any questions, and, guys? Like, do you guys feel comfortable? Um, like, was that my summary pretty hopefully helpful in regards to, you know, how to get feedback or and take feedback? I liked it. Get better. <laughs> no, I think that's good. It's a good description. 
Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a good way to present it. It didn't feel intimidating. Right. Any questions on that before we move on? Nope. Okay. Um, do we want to talk about this event offer from Emily? Maybe we. Is I mean, the, time, the time is clicking. I don't know. I can quickly say it and maybe the details I can post on Slack or. Okay. Because it would be not nice to ignore that. Uh, so, very quickly. Um, uh, she attended, uh, like I said, a couple meetings and she cannot continue because it's like clashes with her other schedule. But she is like, she works for a boat piece, it's a non profit. And she has like, uh, she's very well connected. So she uh, thought of us uh, for the next uh, event that is ocean and fashion uh, ha is happening in New York City. And she offered us that we can join. Um, and it, it's going to be uh, during the period of two weeks from Monday to Friday, starting uh, April 21st. So it goes Monday to Friday, every day from 12, p.m. to 6 p.m. Okay. And in New York City. In New York City. And in the meantime, like we could um, join a pop-up, uh, uh, pop-up like uh, exchange clothing in a shop where we bring our like used nice clothes and uh, do like, you know, fashion exchange. In the meantime, there would be lots of people uh, connect, uh, like related with sustainability and uh, she said they could, uh, they, uh, I mean, we could have some interviews, like um, some media could interview some of us and Vivek, if that's possible. And if someone could be present physically, uh, be in that shop, uh, you know, depending on people's schedules. So I don't know if we're interested, should I go, you know, more uh, like forward with this? Uh, actually, Vivek and me, we won't be in New York uh, starting next Monday, so we won't be physically here. So that's a bummer. Um, so Maybe that's why I'm not, not sure if that makes sense, because then it's only Jennifer, Erica, and that's it, right, in New York City. Huh. I think we, have to, we this is like a longer discussion. I think if we want to do yeah. it, we might have to put this in a Slack message. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, sure. I just can... uh, don't, don't want to, I didn't want to ignore it. And I wanted you to know sure. that that's what she offered. Uh, it could be like an opportunity for us to, yeah, to spread the word and uh, more and more people to get to know us. Yeah, it's just, okay. I will post the details, everything, and then people can answer. So maybe we can add it to action items. Uh, after I post it, everybody could read that and think about it and give your opinion. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. okay. Um, I had written down, uh, Vivek, did you have another meeting update or was that? I mean, I'd like to, I think, I, I just trying to be mindful of time. Like, um, I don't know, does, does, does folks have like a, does everyone have like a few minutes? It doesn't have to be like, a, yeah. I think I like to be mindful about time. I, I, I hate asking people to stay longer, um, <laughs> you know, so. It just didn't work out, and it's what it is. Maybe we can add it to the next next meeting. Okay. And, uh, unless do that. folks want to stay, but I don't. I think it's fine. We can move to Slack too. I mean, I don't know if it's just a, if you just want to have a conversation about it or. Yeah, we could try Slack too. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Cool. Good so yeah, idea. I think that's everything. Let's do. Um, how did the meeting go? Wants to. Wants to start. Maybe we just do thumbs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to just do real quick thumbs up or down? Oh, um, my God. Brad, I thought your section was really helpful. I like your approach to uh, the canvas because I, I see a lot of um, it's essentially an outline of our potential research into practicalities of what we need to know. So um, I like where mm -hmm. that's going. Okay. Do you? If I if I can ask you, do you think that I should um, have a present a little more as of like kind of what Vivek was saying of like what should go in a bo in this, these boxes as we do more of these, or do you think that was enough like intro? Do you think I did enough like preparation to get everyone in the mindset? 
I thought it was pretty solid, but if you okay. want to add 10% of that and that's always a little useful. bit more, maybe. Okay. Sure. Cool. Thanks. Adam, I thought your uh, um, presentation and the distinction between vision and mission was really cool. It was great to have examples. Thank you for that. Uh, great meeting overall. I would say good job, uh, especially to Adam and Brad. And I liked uh, Calvin and Russell's input too. Uh, really on point and uh, uh, useful, helpful, I thought. Cool. Yeah, I really, I really enjoyed hearing um, how people are are dealing with uh, the problem we're trying to solve because we're all solving it already, and it's great to hear how we're all doing it different ways. So I'm excited to see what we come up with with Ula's uh, Mira board. Yeah, that was a good idea. I'll pass it to Vivek. Uh, yeah, I thought this was. Yeah, I think we're. All every every meeting i'm encouraged and i always say that like i, I really mean that and i russell i know you're a, a noam chomsky fan as well and uh and i was listening to him talk about you know uh democracy in america and other issues and he he people always ask him like how do we solve this problem how do we solve this problem and he's like like you solve any problem that's ever been solved in history which is you just keep at it like you just keep at it and and i think Every, the fact that every one of us keeps showing up and showing up with enthusiasm. Some meetings are going to be good. Some meetings aren't going to be as great. But I think the fact that we keep showing up, we're going to we're going to create something really huge. So I'm always encouraged and and, and appreciate the enthusiasm here. So uh, I'll pass it to Ula. <laughs> Probably always have to sit next to you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was great meeting. Uh, I feel like very enthusiastic and positive. Thanks so much, Brad and Adam. Uh, very nicely uh, presented and uh, it was easy to, to understand. Um, and yeah, thanks everyone else. Uh, I feel like, yeah, we, we, um, yeah, we are full of like uh, energy and ideas. And yeah, it was great. Uh, next person. Erica, I think. Erica's the last one. Okay. Or yeah. Brad, maybe. Erica? Uh, oh, I like how we are all practicing our feedback muscles because we're all giving each other feedback, feedback <laughs> now. <laughs> and yeah, I love hearing everybody's uh, in, like, work towards sustainability. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Actually, did we have Adam? Adam, did you talk? Um. Yes, I went first. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, of course you did. Sorry. Brad, maybe Brad. But I appreciate yeah, I think that. Brad yourself. Um, I think it went well. Um, I think we, we're kind of ha tackling heavy topics. So I think, um, you know, I, I think it is just going to be, I think it's just going to take time to get through all this stuff, I guess. I guess that's how I feel about it now. Um, so I don't, you know, some of these things, like I, I think we don't really want to watch. We can really like, dwell on these things a lot and i'd still be pretty happy with it or like pace i guess cool cool well bye everyone good night yeah good night guys. thanks for staying yeah. late bye. thanks guys bye take care bye. Bye. Bye.